Hello and welcome to Let's Play The Warlock of Firetop Mountain by Steve Jackson and Ian Livingstone. Um, this is the first book in the Fighting Fantasy game book series. Um, they're like choose your own adventure books, except we can use dice um, to battle monsters and pick up items and things. Um, if I take you to the adventure sheet, I'll explain it better. Um, yeah, so... Um, we roll dice to determine our skill, stamina and luck and along the way um, you can pick up items um, such as gold, jewels and potions and things and weapons and um, we can battle monsters by using dice. Um, if I read the, the back of the book um, it'll explain it better. Um, armed with two dice, a pencil and an eraser, you can set off on a perilous quest to find the Warlock's treasure. You will need to decide which route to follow and which monsters to fight in, in the elaborate combat system given in the book. You may not survive your first journey, but with experience, skill and luck, each fresh attempt should bring you nearer to your great goal. Fighting Fantasy Game Books, a worldwide sensation. Yeah, this is the first one, and it's very close to being my favourite. It was certainly the first of these books I ever played. Um, I've worked out the best route, um, so I should be able to complete it first time. Um, I've completed this book before. Um, okay, um, how I'm going to do this is, I have a dice program, so I can choose um, a six-sided dice, or die rather, um, I can select the num yeah it makes a noise. I, I can select the number of dice or dices as it says here, but yeah, you know, um, one die, two dice. That's, uh, that's how it works. You know, so you can choose two or one, and then just press the roll button and it's um, randomised like that. Um, you can also use with this program different size dice, so an eight-sided one, a ten, twelve, twenty, hundred. I don't know how a ten one works because it, uh, there wouldn't be equal probability because that isn't a um, a ten-sided um, shape like that. It isn't a uh, isn't a platonic um, solid like a, a tetrahedron, cube, octahedron, dodecahedron, and icosahedron. They're the five platonic solids, so they would have an equal um, each each side um, has an equal chance of being rolled. Whereas a ten-sided one, a hundred one, they wouldn't. So it's obviously just randomised. So if you had a real ten-sided dice, it wouldn't be fair. Or die, it wouldn't be fair. Um, anyway, enough of that. Um, yeah, um, I'm not going to use an adventure sheet. I'm going to use a text document. Um, so I'm just going to type everything out here. So that's how it's going to work. Okay, so let's have a read of this. Okay, how to fight creatures of the underworld. Uh, before embarking on your adventure, you must first determine your own strengths and weaknesses. You have in your possession a sword and a shield, together with a rucksack containing provisions, food and drink for the trip. So I'll just write that in. Um, I'll just write this first. Skill, stamina, luck, provisions. I think we have ten provisions, so I'll write that in now. And then we can have equipment. So we have a sword, shield, and a rucksack. Okay. Um, you have been preparing for your quest by training yourself in sword play and exercising vigorously to build up your stamina. To see how effective your preparations have been, you must use the dice to determine your initial skill and stamina scores. On page 18 to 19 there is an adventure sheet which you may use to record the, uh, the details of an adventure. On it you will find boxes for recording your skill and stamina scores. I'm using a text document. You are advised to either record your scores on the adventure sheet in pencil or make photocopies of the page to use in future adventures. Uh, okay, skill, stamina and luck. Roll one die. Add six to this number and enter this total in the skill box on the adventure sheet. Okay, so roll one die. Oh, we got a six. That's lucky. Right. Um, let's and let's add that to six, and then enter it in our skill. So six plus six is twelve. So so we have maximum skill. That was a good start. Excellent. Right. Okay. What's next? Roll both dice. Add twelve to the number rolled, and enter this total in the stamina box. Okay. So roll both dice. So we need two. Um. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm using a dice program. I could use real dice. I have some, but then 
I could, well, you wouldn't know uh, that I would get the the thing I said, so I could cheat and you wouldn't know it. So um, this is to prove to you that I'm not cheating. Anyway, so number of dice is two, roll, three. So add 12 to this. That's a pretty low score, actually. Um, really annoyed with that, but I have to be fair. So I'm going to add 12 to that. And I'm going to enter this total in the stamina box. So 12 plus 3 is 15. So that's pretty bad for uh, for stamina. I mean, considering the maximum you can get is 24, that's uh, pretty appalling. But at least I have good skill. Let's hope I get better luck with the luck. So let's do that now. Uh, there is also a luck box. Roll one die, add six to this number, and enter the total in the luck box. Okay, uh, so one die, two. So we get eight luck. Um, again, pretty annoying um, but I have to be fair 8, there we go right, um, let's continue ok for reasons that will be explained below, skill, stamina and luck scores change constantly during an adventure you must keep an accurate record of these scores and for this reason you are advised either to write small in the boxes or to keep an eraser handy um, never rub out your initial scores Although you may be awarded additional skill, stamina, luck points, these totals may never exceed your initial scores except on very rare occasions when you will be instructed on a particular page. Your skill score reflects your swordsmanship and general fighting expertise, the higher the better. Um, your stamina score reflects your general constitution, your will to survive, your determination and overall fitness. The higher your stamina score, the longer you will be able to survive. Your luck score indicates how naturally lucky a person you are. Luck and magic are facts of life in the fantasy kingdom you are about to explore. Battles. You will often come across pages in the book which instruct you to fight a creature of some sort. An option to flee may be given, but if not, or if you choose to attack the creature anyway, you must resolve the battle as described below. First record the creature's skill and stamina scores in the first vacant monster encounter box on the adventure sheet. The scores for each creature are given in the book each time you have an encounter. The sequence of combat is then. Uh, roll the two dice once for the creature. Add its skill score. The, this total is the creature's attack strength. Roll the two dice once for yourself. Add the number rolled to your current skill score. This total is your attack strength. If your attack strength is higher than that of the creature, you have wounded it. Proceed to step 4. If the creature's attack strength is higher than yours, it has wounded you. Proceed to step 5. If both attack strength totals are the same, you have avoided each other's blows. Start the next attack round from step 1 above. At step 4, you have wounded the creature, so subtract 2 points from its stamina score. You may use your luck here to do additional damage. See over. The creature has wounded you at step 5, so subtract 2 points from your own stamina score. Again, you may use luck at this stage. See over. Make the appropriate adjustments to either the creature's or your own stamina scores, and your luck score if you use luck. See over. And at 7, begin the next attack round. Repeat steps 1 to 6. This sequence continues until the stamina score of either you or the creature you are fighting has been reduced to 0. Death. Okay, so pretty much what you have to remember is just um, roll the dice once for the creature first. Always the creature first. Add it to the skill score. Then do the same for you. And and whoever has the highest score does the damage. And if it's equal, then you just ignore it. Um, no one does any damage. Escaping. On some pages, you may be given the option of running away from a battle should things be going badly for you. However, if you do run away, the creature automatically gets in one wound on you. Uh, subtract two stamina points as you flee. Such is the price of cowardice. Note that you may use luck on this wound. The normal way, see below. You may only escape if the option is given is specifically given to you on the page. Fighting more than one creature. If you come across more than one creature in a particular encounter, the instructions on that page will tell you how to handle the battle. Sometimes you will treat them as, as a single monster, sometimes you will fight each one in turn. Luck. At various times during your adventure, either in battles or when you come across situations in which you could either be lucky or unlucky, details of these are given on the pages themselves, you may call in your luck to make the outcome more favourable, but beware. You Using luck is a risky business, and if you are unlucky, the results could be disastrous. The procedure for using your luck is as follows. Roll two dice. If the number rolled is equal to or less than your current luck score, you have been lucky and the result will go in your favour. If the number rolled is higher than your current luck score, you have been unlucky and you will be penalised. This procedure is known as testing your luck. Each time you test your luck, you must subtract one point from your current luck score. Thus, you will soon realise that the more you rely on your luck, the more risky this will become. Using luck in battles. On certain pages of the book, you will be told to test your luck and will be told the consequences of your being lucky or unlucky. However, in battles, you will always have the option of using your luck either to inflict a more serious wound on a creature you have just wounded or to minimise the effects of a wound the creature has just inflicted on you. If you have just wounded the creature, you may test your luck as described above. If you are lucky, you have 
have inflicted a severe wound and may subtract an extra two points from the creature's stamina score. However, if you are unlucky, the wound was a mere graze and you must restore one point to the creature's stamina, i.e. instead of scoring the normal two points of damage, you have now scored only one. If the creature has just wounded you, has just wounded you, you may test your luck to try to minimise the wound. If you are lucky, you have managed to avoid the full damage of the blow, restore one point of stamina, i.e. instead of doing two points of damage, it has done only one. If you are unlucky, you have taken a more serious blow, subtract one extra stamina point. Remember that you must subtract one point from your own luck score each time you test your luck. Um, restoring skill, stamina and luck. Skill. Your skill score will not change much during your adventure. Occasionally a page may give instructions to increase or decrease your skill score. A magic weapon may increase your skill, but remember that only one weapon can be used at a time. You cannot claim two skill bonuses for carrying two magic swords. Your skill score can never exceed its initial value unless specifically instructed. Drinking the potion of skill, see you later, will restore your skill to its initial level at any time. Stamina and provisions. Um, your stamina score will change a lot during your adventure as you fight monsters and undertake arduous tasks. As you near your goal, your stamina level may be dangerously low and battles may be particularly risky, so be careful. Your haversack contains enough provisions for 10 meals. You may rest and eat only when allowed by the instructions on a page, and you may eat only one meal at a time. Eating a meal restores four stamina points. When you eat a meal, add four points to your stamina score and deduct one point from, from your provisions. Separate provisions remaining box is provided on the adventure sheet for recording details of provisions. Remember that you have a long way to go, so use your provisions wisely. Remember also that your stamina score may never exceed its initial value unless specifically instructed on a page. Drinking the potion of strength, see later, will restore your stamina to its initial level at any time. Luck. Additions to your luck score are awarded through the adventure when you have been particularly lucky. Details are given on the pages of the book. Remember that, as with skill and stamina, your luck score may never exceed its initial value unless specifically instructed on a page. Drinking the potion of fortune, see later, will, will restore your luck to its initial level at any time and increase your initial luck by one point. Equipment and potions. You will start your adventure with a bare minimum of equipment, but you may find other items during your travels. You are armed with a sword and are dressed in leather armour. Let's put that down. Oh, oh I don't have a shield. I was wrong. It's leather armour. So let's change that to leather armour. You have a rucksack, haversack, backpack on your back to hold your provisions and any treasures you may come across. You also carry a lantern which lights your way, so let's write that down as well, lantern. In addition, you may take one bottle of a magical potion which will aid you on your quest. You may choose to take a bottle of any of the following. A potion of skill restores skill points, a potion of strength restores stamina points, and a potion of fortune restores luck points and adds one to initial luck. These potions may be taken any time during your adventure. Taking a measure of potion will restore skill, stamina, or luck scores to the initial level, and the potion of fortune will add one point to your initial luck score before luck is restored. So that's the key thing. So you get to put it up before, you get to add the initial score before um, it's restored so you can add it you know to one extra each bottle of potion contains enough for two measures i.e. the characteristic may be restored twice during an adventure each time it is used make a note on your adventure sheet remember also that you may only choose one of the three potions to take on your trip so choose wisely i'm going to choose the potion of fortune so potion of fortune and i'll put that i have two Hints on play. There is one true way through the Warlock's dungeon and it will m and it will take you several attempts to find it. Make notes and draw a map as you explore. This map will be invaluable in future adventures and enable you to progress rapidly through to unexplored sections. Not all rooms contain treasure. Many merely contain traps and creatures which you will no doubt fall foul of. There are many wild goose chase passages and while you may indeed progress through the dungeon you will not take the warlock's treasure unless you have picked up certain specific items on the way. Several keys will be found in dungeon rooms. Only by arriving at the warlock's treasure with the correct keys to open his chest will you get to his treasure. You can expect many frustrations in Firetop Mountain. The one true way involves a minimum of risk and any player, no matter how weak on initial dice rolls, should be able to get through fairly easily, i.e. me, because my dice rolls were awful. May the luck of the gods go with you on the adventure ahead. Okay, I'll just read through the rumours and then I'll end part one and start the adventure in part two. 
Rumours. Only a foolhardy adventurer would embark upon such a perilous quest without first finding out as much as possible about the mountain and its treasures. Before your arrival at the foot of Firetop Mountain, you spent several days with the townsfolk of a local village some two days' journey from the base. Being a likeable sort of person, you found it easy to get on with the local peasants, although they told many stories about the mysterious Warlock's sanctuary. You could not feel sure that all, or indeed any of these, were based on fact. The villagers had seen many adventurers pass through on their way to the mountain, but very few ever returned. The journey ahead was extremely dangerous, that you knew for certain. Of those who returned to the village, none contemplated going back to Firetop Mountain. There seemed to be some truth in the rumour that the warlock's treasure was stored in a magnificent chest with two locks, and the keys to these locks were guarded by various creatures within the dungeons. The warlock himself was a sorcerer of great power. Some described him as old, others as young. Some said his power came from an enchanted deck of cards, others from the silky black gloves that he wore. The entrance to the mountain was guarded by a pack of warty-faced goblins, stupid creatures fond of their food and drink. Towards the inner chambers, the the, the creatures became more fearsome. To reach the inner chambers you would have to cross a river. The ferry service was regular, but the ferryman enjoyed a good barter, so you should save a gold piece for the trip. Um, the locals also encouraged you to keep a good map of your wanderings, for without a map you would end up hopelessly lost within the mountain. When it finally came to your day of leaving, the whole village turned out to wish you a safe journey. Tears came to the eyes of many of the women, young and old alike. You couldn't help wondering whether they were tears of sorrow shed by eyes which would never see you alive again and now turn over so yeah that's the um, end of part one um, these are all the things I've done so far really good skill maximum um, terrible stamina um, second from bottom the minimum you can get is 14 and luck about average although less than average really because I've got two so Maximum you can get is 12, but I have the luck of the Potion of Fortunes that should put me up to uh, 10 luck. I have really good skills, so battles should be quite simple um, in theory. Uh, 10 provisions and sword, leather armor, rucksack, lantern, Potion of Fortune. Anyway, so thanks for watching, and um, part 2 I'll start the adventure. Bye bye.